This is Chippa Khan, and welcome to Otherworldly, Changing Times, Changing World Show. Tonight, um, Olya, uh, my, my guest is Laska Kudelka or Olya uh, Novozlova, if you can correct that, who That's is... Um, for English speaker. <laughs> it is, um, and, and she has, she, she was born in Moscow, but she also has Ukrainian uh, parentage as well, so... It's, and it goes back to the uh, USSR. Oh, my goodness. Uh, for all of you young people out there who don't remember it. <laughs> uh, but the older folklore. Days. The folklore is all more than 100 years old anyway. So <laughs> and, and that's what we're interested in. And she's she's going to be telling it. Not only that, she's got some pictures. So we're yes. all excited. Um, um Yes. And I also want you to, if she turns on her camera at some point, she, I, I met her in the SCA and she does beautiful beadwork and goldwork embroidery. And she wears these beautiful uh, things that she's made. And I'm hoping that we get a chance to see one of them. But anyway, well, that's, yeah. that's Olya. And uh, we will, uh, and we will be, we will be able to, to, uh, I'm going to turn it over to her now because hi, <laughs> she's the star tonight. Hello. Uh, first, first off, hi, um, Olya, Olaska, both work for me. Laska and NSCA. Anybody doesn't know, it's Society for Creative Anachronisms, and I don't know if the screen sharing will record. I don't think last time it did, and for future YouTube um viewers. I will post the link to the handout where you can look at all the pictures and see all the spellings of the, you know, critters and creatures of fairy tales uh, and look up the names names of a fairy tales and, and, and images, beautiful images uh, there. So if it doesn't, if, if the, if the recording doesn't catch it, you'll be able to. I'll look uh look at it uh from the comments. Uh so yeah. Uh I've been interested in fairy tales um since you know since very early childhood. Uh I've I've been interested in mythologies of different cultures. And uh Russian fairy tales are they have unique things to them that a lot of um west uh western uh people some of them people know some of them people would be surprised to some of the people here so let's let's get into it so the fairy tales uh they rise from oral tradition and so basically i'm not going to discuss any tales that were um uh, uh, written uh, got got a little uh, literature treatment uh, later on and don't have the uh, like original fairy tales uh, folklore fairy tales uh, recorded so there's some things that you might think of as, as a Russian fairy tale but uh, I might might not cover that's the reason why so uh and the oral tradition comes down in uh, multiple ways. There's songs, there's, uh, and the biggest kind of free rough categories is magical fairy tale. Then there's legends, and legends are called bulini. That is, they they have like a grain of truth to them, and. Oh, here's a nice babushka telling, uh, telling the uh, kids fairy tales at, in in the evening, and uh, so legends do have. Uh, they might have share some of the uh, villains from a fairy tale, like you know, if the if the hero is fighting a dragon, it's gonna be you know. Something, something of a <clears throat> magical real is what it's going to be like. But they they're treated as something that 
you kind of supposed to believe that happened. And Bulini, the word itself, it literally means a thing that happened. Bui means uh, a, a real occurrence. And then uh, there's also a folk demonology, and that's more of the spirits that inhibit the world alongside of us and some something that you can uh, expect to encounter in your day-to-day -day life. And I did a class on the folk demonology in last October, in tw uh, October uh, uh, 2003. And if you go back to the other worldly catalog, uh, Changing Times, Changing Worlds you, uh, YouTube catalog, you, you will see it there. So it is helpful to have some sort of framework to analyze fairy tales, uh, to, to do comparative analysis, to be like, well, this fairy tale has the elements, say, a Russian tale of Masha and three bears is just like the Goldilocks and three bears in the, it, it has the same elements as this tale in um, uh, from Brothers Grimm. Uh, and there's a couple of different schools of analyzing tales. Uh, a lot of people heard about Campbell's Hero's Journey or Young's Collective Subconscious. But uh, Campbell mostly looked at the Western uh, European tales and classical mythology. So um, you... The, the elements and motifs of Russian fairy tales don't fit, fit ne neatly into his classification. There's some different steps. So there's also the international Aaron Thompson classification system, and that's used by folklorists across the board. It's You can analyze Polynesian tales or tales from... Uh, First Nations, uh, in um, according to that, and it, it gives you a better classification system. It's a lot more holistic. And Russian fairy tales uh, were analyzed. Uh, everything that was collected by that by the time by Vladimir Prop in his Mythology of Folklore, a uh, folk folktale book. It has been translated to English twice, but it was in the 50s and 60s. It is possible to get a book on, on interlibrary loan. It is really good. It discusses a, a lot of interesting ways of how to break down the fairy tales uh, to the kind of steps. It analyzes the, the, the structure of the tales. And it's from uh, called uh, syntagmatic analysis, syntagmatic approach, which means elements are analyzed in order of appearance and in a relationship to power. And um, it's, a, it's a very interesting way to look at it. And um, other, other good thing things to think about in the uh, uh, fairy tales there since they're all tradition the, there's a, re a repetitive narration like um, no matter that's that's what kind of prop looks at says uh, say a hero or a heroine or uh, encounters baba yaga she will always be described with same epithets her Hot, hot is going to be described in the same words, and interaction, uh, initial interaction will be described in the same way. And um, a lot of times that's kind of done that way. Uh, it's like interlocking building blocks, and it also gives uh, an opportunity to the person uh, who tells the tale to kind of regurgitate a, this block of the of a text while they gather their thoughts about uh, on what's going to happen next in the story so it's very helpful that way there's um there's a lot of um like oh 
things that repeat in threes. That's called trickle on trickle on. Uh, there's things that repeat in three, meaning trick. Uh, that's called trickle on crescendo. Uh, so uh, I will add um one of those things to a handout later. So um uh, as I uh make it for publishing. So uh the best uh collection of tales uh was uh the, the, one of the earliest and most complete was. It was by, by Alexander Afanasyev, called Russian Fairy Tales. It has been translated to English and has been pu published. Uh, it was during um, a 17th century where uh, there was a lot uh, uh, there was uh, there was a lot of interest in romanticism and gathering tale, and at, it was at that time that a lot of literary versions of uh, fairy tales were published where famous authors would give a literary treatment to fairy tales and they often would mm -hmm. uh, yeah they would often grab a whole bunch of different fairy tales and you know kind of jam them together to make for a much longer tale or a much more thematically hanging together tale uh, uh some of them were in verse um so, uh, so that's what I I would look for more research on fairy tales, just to read the tales themselves, get uh, find Afanasyev's book, and for analyzing Russian tales, uh, Vladimir Prop's book. So that's kind of initial overview. Are there any questions at this point? Yay, nay, come on. No, uh, nothing in the chat. There have been some comments about how the Victorians bowdlerized, as they call it, a lot of fairy tales in the in in their time period. Um, oh yes, the there's been, yeah. There's been since yeah. there've been times when tales were sanitized for publishing. <clears throat> like when I when I was uh, reading about um, and just uh, different ways to um, uh, to classify fairy tales. Uh, that that major um uh, so russian fairy tales they fall into a couple of groups uh there is magical fairy tale which is going to have all your you know monsters and strange creatures and interaction with them and magical objects then there's going to be anecdotal fairy tales and i was like oh anecdotal fairy tales also include erotic fairy tales oh i don't know any of those what and those were those would have been sanitized heavily in 18th, 19th, most of 20th century for you know different reasons. There were also a lot of fairy tales, especially um there were some literary uh, versions of fairy tales which were forbidden for a time um by uh, the the Rus uh, Russian Empire's czar's censorship because they would like portray the czar in a bad light or something. And they were actually meant as a satire. So, you know, the censors were kind of right, but it sucked that it happened. <laughs> so censors caught the sat actual satire, which was in in, in the liter literary fairy tales. And uh, yeah, and then there's animal tales. That's another one. And then there's just like short, very short um rhyming tales so those are those are oh uh, we're, we're gonna mostly focus on magical fairy tales because it doesn't you know kind of most fun and get most fun illustrations but i will do a couple of anecdotal ones in it toward the end and one animal one okay um. uh so everybody always um uh, wants to hear about Baba Yaga and uh, she's of course kind of badass <laughs> wonderful wonderful witch uh, uh, who flies around in mortar and pestle uh, sometimes with a broom and pestle but always always inside a 
huge mortar. Uh, she's always described as Baba Yaga of a bony leg. Uh, so <clears throat> some uh, some folklorists analyze it as uh, she has one uh, one leg in the land of a living and one in the land of a dead. Uh, she's often um, she's often uh, oh. She might not see well or see at all because she always greets the hero heroine with uh, saying, "I choo choo smell Russian Russian spirit." Uh, she never 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 describes her as seeing anything. And, uh, she described with her nose uh, ingrown into the ceiling as she's lying on on top of her oven. Um, she is very occasionally there are a few tales where she eats a tries to well more more likely tries to eat little children. However, in the most fairy tales, she's um um a much more interesting character. Uh, you establish a guest host relationship with her by um first you approach her house on um. Uh, on chicken legs, which everybody loves, and uh, she might threaten to, you know, cook you and eat you. But what you say to her is, "Oh, um, I've just been on the road for a long time. I'm I'm dirty and I haven't been fed. So why don't you first let me take a bath in your bathhouse and feed me?" And that tricks her into establishing a guest host relationship with you. And she becomes a helper uh, by giving out advice on your quest and a donor. She often gives uh, gives magical items, which are very useful. Uh, most commonly, most commonly uh, it would be a bowl of yarn which you would uh, throw on the ground before you and it would um, roll and you can follow it to whatever your destination is. Very often, you don't just meet one Baba Yaga. You come across the first hut and you say, uh, hut, hut, turn, turn your back into the forest in the front to me. The hut turns around. You, you encounter Baba Yaga. You do the song and dance of establishing guest host relationship always described in the same way and then and then she she doesn't know the um uh, oh how to help you on a quest but she gives you a magical item and then she sends you to her sister an older baba yaga and then that one will send you to her sister to, to the third sister an even older baba yaga and there would be um so that's what that's where one of the uh, places where trickle on crescendo comes in that triple repetition uh, and uh you need three of the magical items to complete your quest uh baba yaga the name itself baba is a russian word for grandma it is considered a babble word like mama papa baba uh and uh, but Yaga, there's a lot of disagreement, and uh, it could be related to old Czech word of Jeza, which or to, to uh, Serbian and Croatian word for Jeza, horror or chill. It could be um, uh, Jeza is anger, and old Church Slavonic Jeza means disease so never a super good thing but i do like in the um in the tales she's usually a lot of fun and for people who are in sca check out the baba yaga headdress i think she got herself a laurel and a friend who i showed the picture to mentioned she probably got a laurel <laughs> in cooking by by um serving a feast of little children, which was delicious. <laughs> so um 
uh, here's uh, on, uh, two illustrations of the same fairy tale uh, where Vasilisa is sent by her evil stepmother to go to the forest and, and get light because uh, the evil stepmother extinguished all the lights in the village on purpose to, to send Vasilisa away. And, but Vasilisa is so uh, lovely and kind to Baba Yaga that Baba Yaga gives her one of the skulls, which um, uh, which is that uh, which her uh, fence is decorated with, and it, she brings it back to the village, and the skull's laser eyes kind of follow the evil stepmother and her uh, her evil stepsisters around and burn, burns burns them to crisp which is uh, you know always a good time and on the right it's the same story and uh, as Vasilisa is going into the um, forest to, to see Baba Yaga it takes her whole day and in the morning she sees a white rider and during the day, she sees a red rider, and in the evening, she sees a black um, rider, and it's dawn, uh, day, and night uh, pers personified. And and I just really love those illustrations. The illustrations are by Van Bibilian, a lot, Bilibin. A lot of illustrations I, I get covered here are by him. I will... Um, uh, I will uh, add credits before I publish the handout. So uh, here's another uh, character uh, from a different story also. Again, a woman. You can see that a lot of uh, fairy tales will have a, a female protagonist who goes on a quest. So it's not so much a hero's journey, it's heroine's journey. And another really cool illustration of Baba Yaga on the side there. And here is the one story uh, that particularly stands out where Baba Yaga actually wants to uh, eat the little children. And it's about a little girl who whose parents are uh, wealthy merchants. And as we went to a market, they told her to uh, take care of her little brother. But she was uh, she just put him under the uh, under the tree and went off and played, and the little uh, brother was abducted by magic swan geese, uh, and the swan geese carried him off, and she ran after after him, and uh, on on her um, on as she ran, she first encountered a big oven in the meadow. And the oven offered her rye cakes, and the girl turned her nose up at them, say, "Oh, but at my daddy's place, I don't even eat wheat cakes." And then she came to the apple tree, and the apple tree asked her to uh, raise its branches because, uh, and would reward her with apple. And she said, "Well, I don't even eat even much fancier apples at my daddy's place." And then uh, there was a river of milk, and she. She's like, I don't even eat cream at home. So um, as she as she got into the, uh, finally caught up with her brother and, and the um, and the geese swan. Uh, they brought her, they brought the brother into to Baba Yaga's hut, and uh, Baba Yaga set the uh, set the little girl to spin flax and went went outside, and the little mouse came out and asked for a little porridge from a girl, uh, telling her she'll give her a good advice. And the girl finally learned something and she gave her porridge and the girl um, um, uh, when the mouse told the girl that Baba Yaga is about uh, is um, uh, starting up her bathhouse and will bake and eat her, uh, her and her little brother. So little mouse um uh, took over spinning and uh the girl ran off of her brother and she she again came across the river of milk and this time was kind to it and river of milk let her uh, hide underneath the banks and then she ran up you know, they're running and now they're encountering apple tree 
and oh, hide um hide in the remains because the the Baba Yaga sent the magic geese swan uh, to chase after them, so we need to hide it periodically. They ran to the apple tree, and now she was nice and helped the uh, uh secure the boughs of the apple tree, and the apple tree let them hide underneath, and then uh. Uh, got to the oven and they got to hide in the oven and then they got home uh, before their parents got in so um the story ended well and uh story ended with you know uh no nobody died except Baba Yaga was hungry so let's see uh oh I'm looking over my notes um so are there any questions about Baba Yaga herself or just uh the how is she usually portrayed in the stories? Do you know anything about her steel teeth? Uh oh yeah, it's one of her epithets. It might be just a rhyming thing. It also might be. Uh, I read that it is more of the northern uh thing that comes up more in the northern uh, uh stories. Uh, but I but it is again uh. Part of her, uh, she sometimes uh, she she often describes as having a hump, having her uh, breast hanging all the way to the floor, depending on how censored the fairy tale was. Uh, it's it it is it is just a, one of those standard epithets. It might indicate again her straddling uh um position of straddling the world world of a uh, living with uh with a world of dead and the world where all magical things are possible because mm -hmm. uh, almost every every time where the tale in the tale where she is your help uh fulfills a helper role she's going to be the first thing that you will encounter She's also sometimes a mother of the main heroine, uh, like Vasilisa, the much much wise one. In a couple of tales, her her mother is Baba Yaga, and that's where the hero goes when his wife's been abducted, or that's where hero goes uh, in the in a tale. Go where don't know whither, bring what don't know what. Uh, Vasilisa was able to help her hus husband with two impossible tasks that the czar set for him but the third one she didn't know so she sent her husband to her mother Baba Yaga to get advice from hmm. so uh, a lot of times it's the, your first stop on your magical journey and and that's that's when you kind of cross from everyday life into the um the like strange and fantastical she seems to take on a different nature physically a lot of the time too you some of the illustrations you've shown she's more yeah. human like so one of them she almost looked like a tree yeah uh that one uh right here yeah yeah it, there's something about the language of ingrown nose that um that maybe that particular illustrations but by, by believing uh kind of took it to to mean uh, uh, to to mean it that it's ingrown like, uh, it's a, it's a, it is a very, it is a word which mostly is going to be only used for kind of wood, hmm. so it's it's a strange thing. Uh, sh there's often metal components to her, like teeth or breasts, and uh the the leg is almost always described as bone or bony okay. but it also so it might be just one of those standard epithets okay. like um saying homeric poetry you're never just gonna say the dawn came it's gonna be the goddess dawn the rosy fingered mm. and it fills up the line of uh, iambic pent pentameter really nicely and you have <laughs> your time to catch your breath and think about what are you going to say next okay. uh, i i have a question mm. hi um your presentation is wonderful so far i was just wondering um what your perspective is on 
Baba Yaga as being a type of goddess figure, um, like the way that she is, for example, like the, the, the illustration where she almost looks wooden, right? And yeah. we describe her as having the bony leg and having one leg, you know, in this world and then in the other world. What do you think of her in the perspective of like being a type of goddess related to yeah. Yeah. death That's and rebirth? Mm -hmm. It is, uh, it has definitely been proposed by some scholars that uh, she, she's a, uh, like has totemic nature to her. She's associated with cats occa uh, occasionally. We're gonna cover some other uh, creatures that are associated with um, other animals that can also be totemic. There might be uh, there's some which analyze her as uh, like a remnant of a matriarchal society, which which has been uh, which has been um, kind of pushed into villainy over time as patriarchy took over there's there's been uh there's been uh i've read somewhere about the hot and the chicken legs that there would be it uh, in a pagan tradition there'd be sacrifices of chickens in the uh forest and would be little houses built for ancestors so there's gonna be an can be ancestral mm -hmm. worship there, which fits in very well into the transitioning to uh, afterlife. And and her as becoming your helper, once you placate her, that fits very well with ancestral worship. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely she might be like a demoted goddess. Like over time, uh, the over time mythology uh, was kind of, Mythology was transferred into fairy tale. And so does that answer your question? I mean, there's a lot to look into there. So um I can yes, uh, thank you. I'll, uh, uh I can recommend uh a friend of mine does a whole class on just Baba Yaga. Uh I I I will um send a link into the uh notes after the presentation, like of thank her you. hand for research from her. Any other Baba Yaga related questions? Yeah? No. Okay, well we spend like half an hour on her, so let's let's get let's do a little bit more of the other ones. So Kashe the Deathless. Kashe is um it might the name might come from her bones or from uh, uh because it has both spellings koshe and kashe so koshe is definitely seems related to a word for bones kashe uh is more related to the um old old church slavonic word for like a, a person who is male malevolent toward you the person who is um going to do you, do you no good uh, and uh, he is most famous for abducting young maidens, and uh, that the deathless part of his name means that you can just kill him. He keeps his death separate from his body. His death is uh, over over on the ocean. There is an island, and on that island, there is an oak, and under that oak, there is a chest is buried and inside that chest there is a hair and in that hair there is a duck and in that duck there is an egg and in that egg is a needle and the, on the tip of that needle is the death of Kashe. so the hero if he loses his bride has to go um you know um for first to get rid of Kashe has to um uh uh has to travel to that island and of course the when the moment chest is open, the hair is gonna run away, and you have to shoot it with bow and arrow, and then the duck is flies out of a hair, and you have to shoot it, and usually the egg falls somewhere, you know, uh, and breaks, and you, then then the needle 
usually it falls inside a haystack and it's it's a whole big big ordeal but it's it's kind of fun now this particular illustration i really love because it's one of the few times where um it this is maria marievna maria the the daughter of a sea king and she married ivan ivan Nazar's son and when he came into her palace she told him he, he can go to any room except that that one over there. And when she was away from home, he, of course, went there. So, you know, kind of reverse of Bluebeard. And in, inside that room, well, Kashe the Deathless was chained up for 300 years because she defeated him in the past. And I just love that kind of girl power attitude. But uh, communication skills could have been better. And Kashe uh, tricks Ivan into bring him uh, three pails of water because he didn't eat or drink anything for 300 years. But once he drinks, he gets back his uh, powers and is able to uh, break the chains, abduct uh, Maria. And then, of course, uh, Ivan has to go on quest to, you know, uh, to 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 do all the steps and retrieve his his uh bride. Let's see, and that's another illustration of Kashi. Sometimes he has a very very powerful magic horse who gives him advice and gives him uh, a lot of benefits. Uh, and and um, is faster than any other steed, and that's how he. Uh, and <clears throat> I want I. Ivan was Ivan was actually to uh, for his last quest to defeat Kashe and get Maria back. He had to raise a horse from fall, fall to be even stronger, and that horse kicked Kashe in in the uh, chest. And as he was pursuing them, and that's only when he was able to defeat him. Any questions on Kashe? before we move forward. There's also our tales when he turns um, of our heroes and heroines into different things. Like one was a, uh, one was a, what kind of nut? Not the, not a pecan, another like hard shell nut. Not a chestnut. Maybe, maybe Sorry. a walnut. Walnut, walnut, turn. Okay. Okay. I, I was noticing that that while they both seem to be, uh, yes, we're powerful even though we're old. They don't seem to make such a point out of uh, talking about how ugly he was, like that, which is I think patriarchy. Uh, there's a couple of tales. Uh, in one of them, he has um, a crab claws for hands. No oh, neat. Oh, so uh, and he catches the czar. Czar takes a drink uh, out of the um. Uh, directly out of a well, and and he tells, and he doesn't release the czar until the czar is promised to give him something in his house that he doesn't know about. And of course, the, the czar comes home and finds out his wife is pregnant. And then there's a whole thing, a whole like when they tr they try to s switch the babies, but the babies so so that he doesn't have to give out give his own son. But then the babies get switched back. It's 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 a it's a really fun tale. But let's see. We we have twenty minutes to cover the others. Okay. So let me just do like a little breeze through, and and I'll flesh out the handout, and you guys can look up more tales too. Here is Zmei Garinich. Uh, it's a dragon, or literally the snake. The son of a mountain, Garinich, uh, Gara is mountain, H is the patronymic. And uh, Zme Garinich is the Russian dra dragon. It, uh, it occurs in both fairy tales and in uh, Buine, which is the legends, where in legends, uh, uh, the, the, the legendary heroes are the ones who battle him. Uh, I actually cheated, and that picture is on on the on the right is from Bulina. 
And the picture on the left is from Loop Key, which is like a little let lithographs, which were very popular in Russia. They were there were um, cheap ways to get illustrations out. People would um, uh, do lithographs and then uh, hand paint them and sell them for very cheap at the farmers. Um, markets and things back in you know 17th 18th 19th centuries uh, so Zmeikaranich will always have multiple heads different numbers of multiples usually multiples of three so it's like the first if you have to face more than one first one's going to have three heads second's going to have nine heads and then the, the, the final one final, final boss will have 12 heads and also the magic finger, which which is on fire and let, let, lets him regenerate the head. So he's uh, the final boss is harder to defeat. And uh, he has power, pa powers both over fire and water. So I didn't find exactly why water. He's some, uh, like, well, what are the, uh, I mean, fire is fairly self-evident. He breathes fire, but... Uh, the water he's often is guarding the bridge under the bridge comes out of the water when you attack him so he kind of like um has um m multiple but i didn't find a an interesting um thing that why why two elements and why two such disparate elements but he's definitely uh is um connected to both. So here's a couple more illustrations. Now this one is pretty fun. Uh sometimes Megarinich is also gonna be called Chuda Yuda, but uh really Chuda Yuda Ruba Kit is marvelous fish whale. And um Chuda is a marvel or something really big uh, or something really impressive. Uh, Yuda, there was a couple of things about etymology, but uh, it's disputed. But most most people tend to agree it's just it just there to you know just to rhyme and sound interesting, but could also mean um, a sea creature. And riba is fish, and kit is whale, and it all rhymes in Russian, and it's usually this lievophant, which is so uh, either. Either kind of exactly the same as Megarinich in some stories and ha has a power shape shifting, or it is going to be this island. It's so big that people just live on top of it, and there's like three villages on top of on top of it. It's it's so huge, and when it shifts, people think it's an earthquake. Um. There's a uh, Kod Bayun, uh, the cat which tells uh, tall tales. Uh, he is usually kind of intermediate enemy. Uh, there, there's one tale where it's he's a final quest, and the czar's son has to bring him to the czar because he is um uh, uh he his stories have uh healing powers. However, if you just encounter him on the way and haven't subdued him, he will tell you tales and stories and sing your songs until you fall asleep and then he eats you. It is possible that it's an eight. Uh, I've read I read it today and I went to, darn. It is possible that this is actually like a literary in, invention and. 18th century and just kind of entered the folk tales from literature, not the other way around. But I really like him and I sometimes call him Bye Bye Kitty because he both, you know, uh, uh, talk, uh, wishes you good night and goodbye and then uh, eats you. So bye bye. Uh, another interesting one is Nightingale the Robber. And uh, usually when you're on your quest, Nighting, uh, he's called Nightingale because he whistles so loud that 
the forests laid down and the um the all the grass is torn from the fields and um you always you'll get you'll get the advice from either from your wise wife or from Baba Yaga, from you know whatever help stranger you helped along the way, is to put wax on your ears as you approach him, to be able to subdue him. Any questions on last couple? Yes, um, about what you just said. Can you explain more about the wax? I'm just curious about that because I'm doing a lot of research on like honey and bees and wax oh, in, you know, in Slavic wax, beliefs? It, uh, that one is like literally just earplugs. It's okay. Like, <laughs> it no, it that it doesn't have it doesn't seem to have like any super doesn't give you any supernatural power. It just stops the sound because it's the sound which Nightingale Robber uses to subdue his enemies. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah, he whistles very loud, so it's a sonic attack. Mm. Oh. Okay, well, everybody loves Firebird. And then Firebird myths, it's usually, it's where you, the uh, hero sees the Firebirds playing, uh, kind of playing in, in the dark, like sees something bright in the forest, follows it. And the fire, either snatches the tail feather from a Firebird, a Firebird drops it a feather. And of course, uh, uh, your, um, you are advised from picking it up, usually by your animal companion. And of course, you know, the hero picks it up. And of course, the czar sees, sees it and now thinks that, oh, look, you, you were able to get that. Now, now, now go get me the whole firebird. Oh, you were able to do that. Now go, go get me a, uh, go get me a bride. And then a bride with Lisa is like, Mm, I've been captured, but I don't really want to uh, marry the old czar. So then she starts sending the hero on the different adventures. Here's another good one of Firebird in the Palich style. And then there's Sirin. It's Sirin, not Siren. I just there's no good way to tr transcribe it into English. And Alkanost, they're twin birds. The bird of sorrow is Sirin. And Alkanast is the bird of joy. And they sometimes if you uh if you are if your quest takes you to magical gardens, they sing to you, they give out advice. Uh there's also tales of uh when Alkanast uh lays an egg, she lays it on the beach and the egg rolls into the ocean and when it hatches, that's when the storms start. So there's there's a lot of depictions on the, of 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 them. Uh, of, more of Alkanas than of Syrian, so I can see it more more of joy than of sorrow. And then there's just a couple of uh real cool fairy tales. We well, only have what ten minutes, so let me just suggest that you look them up they're um they're available in a lot of um a lot of translations uh and uh gray wolf is usually uh you you do you do him a service if you say a hero you save him from a trap and he will serve you and advise you in your quest so uh that's uh, that's uh, a really nice tale, Ivan, that's our son, Firebird and Grey Wolf. Uh, then Sivka Burka is a tale about the little horse, which is uh, called Sivka Burka, literally means grey-brown horse, grey-brown. And it helps you jump real high and get a ring or or either a ring or a... Um, a handkerchief from a princess, which was the um, uh, some something the king for some reason decided to test test the suitors. That's how that's how he will pick the suitor for his daughter is the by who jumps the highest. But you know, fairy tale logic sometimes works, and um, and it's a little bit of a Cinderella story because the the uh it's the youngest son who is 
very unassuming and his older two brothers you know don't don't really treat him well and he um he get he get recognized by either that handkerchief or by that ring when um everybody's invited to the palace for the wedding but nobody knows who the groom was so he, he needs to present that token uh frog princess is a lovely tale which i highly recommend because it it has everything it has uh kind of totemic origin because you are uh it's czar asked three of his sons to you know to just shoot an arrow and wherever that arrow lands that's where the bride is and the youngest uh son ivan of course uh the his arrow lands by the uh by a little frog but little frog turns out to be a princess um who's been uh enchanted by Cache to be a frog and only be able to shed her skin sometimes. And uh, she was enchanted because Cache, uh, she wouldn't marry him. And uh, when Ivan's brothers kind of, and, and sisters-in-law kind of egg him on when the, uh, when the princess is in her uh, human form, to burn the skin, she is taken back to a cachet and Ivan has to go on a quest to get her back. Uh, here's um, a little bit more of the um, anecdotal or like everyday fairy tale of, um, about two siblings who uh, are running away from their witchy stepmother. And the girl keeps telling the brother not to drink from imprints of animals. Don't drink from an imprint of the horse. You'll you'll become a fall a fall. Don't don't drink from Im, imprint of a cow. You'll become a calf. And then don't bring drink from imprint of a go goat. You'll become a kid. And of course, he on the third time he drinks and becomes a little kid. And um, then um. Alyonushka is, uh, you know, she's taking care of her little kid brother, little kid brother. And a prince happens upon her and marries her. But the evil step, witchy stepmother saw that and she um, drowns Alyonushka and uh, takes, uh, takes on her appearance and her position and tries to get her husband to kill the little kid. And the little kid asks, "Hey, can I, can I, can I just go to the river to drink before you know I'm, 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 I'm killed? Please, last requests." And um, of course, uh, Prince follows and sees that Alyonushka is there on the bottom. Uh, um, and uh, they, they, they take her out. She revive, uh, gets revived. Uh, evil witch gets killed, and uh, she's get she got killed the little brother becomes a little boy again uh phineas the bright falcon is a little is a fun story kind of a, a little bit of beauty and the beast in that the um the father of three daughters is sent uh goes on uh, goes on an air uh goes traveling and asks the three daughters what they want and the youngest daughter uh, all she wants is the um feather from a Phineas the bright falcon which is actually you know a hero who turns into the falcon and when when she gets it if uh whenever whenever she drops it against the floor it becomes that young man and they you know become engaged or whatever in her room uh the fairy tale is unclear but the sisters hear them talking and uh fin uh Phineas flies out every day to you know as a falcon out of the window and when sisters see it they um put knives on the windowsill so when he comes back he is uh very wounded and he has to fly away and and lets lets his bride know that you know she has to go on a quest to find him so um, 
a neat story. There's a whole saga from Ural Mountains called The Mistress of Copper Mountain. It's more of a Siberian tales than uh, Eastern Slavic tales, but I highly recommend looking them up. They're very bittersweet and very neat. It's a uh, Even though she's called the mistress of a copper mountain, what she rewards you with is malachite. And she, she can turn into one of those little lizards. She's either... Uh, a copper lizard or this huge maiden and um and uh oh and it's um the tale tales of miners and they're they they involve some they're almost fey in nature like if you enter under a copper mountain and you meet the mistress she might hold you there for a couple of days, but years passed in the real life. So uh, that was is neat, and it's kind of outside of the regular Russian fairy tales, but I do recommend looking into them. At Pike's Behest is your magic fish story, and it is also called Yemelia the Simpleton, and and it, it it is one of my favorites. Uh, it is it, it is about you know a, a a young guy who is a layabout and family force him to go get water and uh, from a from a frozen river and he uh, uh, he caught a pike in his pail and the pike of course asked him uh, to release to release her and she and. And every wish of his will be granted as long as he says, at Pike's behest, at my wish, I wish my blah, blah, And And of course, he's going to end up, because he's so lazy, he take, he doesn't want to walk anywhere anymore. So he rides on his um, Russian oven where he spends most of his days sleeping. And I'll uh, just... Uh, I love it. <clears throat> Yeah, there's just so much. Maroska is a tale of Father Frost. We're almost out of time. Snigurichka is the Ice Maiden. And that's that's pretty much all for the magical ones that I had. There's, uh, I added a couple of like kids ones, like little kid ones. And I'll I'll just give you guys a write up since we're at the um at at time and I wanted to see if you have any any more questions. Well I think we need another session with you. <laughs> well, I know. I, know. Is, but, well, I think there's a third section of, of the uh Russian folk tales. Yeah. Yeah. We did the demons, this is a fairy tale, so there's another one coming. Yay. This is fascinating. I have been listening to you and looking at the images and realizing they're I want to try and analyze the stories and find all the comparisons where they are uh, similar yes, to other I'm stories. Actually, mm -hmm. What I what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put uh, I'm gonna redo the slides. I did the slides real big so you can see them on the on the Zoom well. So for the for the handout that I'll share for each story, I'm gonna give you a link to um. Wikipedia on that story because it gives you the uh similar tales in it gives it it gives you the classification of that tale in the uh well that will be in nice. in the um according to uh what was it the major classification that uh uh the yeah um uh in uh Arthur Thomas I think is um. I understand the, what you mean. Uh, I don't know the name. Classification but... system? Yes. And then it also gives you the, this is just like a French tale of blah, 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 or German tale of blah, blah, blah. So it's, it, it is useful to think about it like that, but then also like read the synopsis and be like, oh, but this is very different. Mm -hmm. This is the same, but this part is very different. And that's where you find what it spe has to yeah. say about the culture it comes from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As compared to the other cultures that have a similar story. That so yeah, I'll, you're definitely right, and that's why the classifications are so important because then you can 
put one uh, narrow down and put two side by side mm -hmm. from say same motifs from different cultures and be like oh this one puts emphasis on this this one had the guy look for missing wife but this one had a wife look for missing husband so uh who has more agency things like that awesome Mm -hmm. so i'll 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 just for every fairy tale i'll just i'll just link to wikipedia because it provides that info so um now how are you going to yeah. get the the uh, link to the oh. handout to us in the chat or uh i will uh i mean the handout is as oh, you know as uh as it as it is uh i can link it to you right now but uh i actually wanted to put in um Oh, okay. So more you, links in it. Message uh, it yeah, I will. I will. If if you yeah. if you message it to me, I, then I, I will get the. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I also want to put that in touch with you. Uh, uh, yeah, but, I also want to put attributions of all the images. Too. Okay, well, if you send it to me, I will send it to Lois. So when it goes on YouTube, it's got yeah, the so final, it's be final copy that you want. So. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Now, there's an email that's been shared with you in chat. She wants to stay in touch. Uh, to do, do, let me go to chat. There's some thanks here. Oh, ah. yeah. There we go. Do, 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 do. Chat 27. Whoa. And the three doctors saving the chat are now at the top of the chat section. Mm, if anybody wants to save this. For the... Uh, so we, the email we say much the... this time. <laughs> we I do have the link for mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. last October's demonology one with Laska. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and and it's I, I think I put uh did we put the handout in the in the in that description? I think we did. I do not remember. <laughs> we can. Double check, but it's over there. Or I replied both the link on you. Yeah, on yes, YouTube. that's a, it's a complete. It's a previous session on YouTube, so you yeah. can find it's it from October. That's like October fifteenth or something. Yes, it was. Then uh, I've got the link there. So, do, 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 do. excellent. Thank you. So, because oh, you know, get 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 a bigger I dose of, of Laska. Uh, oh, and for people who are, are a little bit confused why there are two names, is one's her SCA name and, and one's her, her modern name. So, mm -hmm. but. Oh, that, okay. You want to do a little bit of um, show and tell? Oh, my. Yes. Get no. get a close up of that one. Oh, okay. So, Let this is. That. I'm really, really proud of this guy. And, oh, and it is my Firebirds. I love the Firebirds. Nice. I they came out real nice. You've seen them in person; they're so good. And and yeah. and you recognize that the gemstones, yeah, yes. <laughs> all yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's and a... then here's oh. a different hat. Oh my! This one again with birds and with the tree of life, which is a very pretty common motif in uh, embroidery, but not really in the fairy tales themselves. Oh well, well, yeah. embroidery is its in its own thing. Yep, uh, a lot of embroidery kind of like our pagan beliefs, which survived the churches. Uh, as you can hear, there's some uh, just like little things that mm -hmm. that that I also embroidered. Uh, embroidery just... would be a good place to save the traditions from the. Christian church. Yes, and especially since the women were so immediately excluded from religious life when right. uh, when entire, you know, Kievan Rus was forcibly um, oh, a lot of those are from Chirpikan, the, uh, the gold. Mm. Yeah, well, that's the in the SCA, we, we sell gold so people yeah. can do gold work embroidery. So here yep. you are. You're doing you're doing embroidery and you're making pretty pictures, and that's all the church sees. But you're yeah. actually saving yep. the stories that are, are that are your tradition. Uh, yeah. If you remember, it was a big part of my uh of my presentation. Here's some uh, mittens I made uh and nail binding techniques. Oh, and nice. I do that too. That's my other a hat. 
That yeah. is a thing that, that a lot of people don't know. Nail binding, if you take a pair of scissors to it or, or something, it doesn't unravel. So yeah, it's very, nuts. It oh, takes, nuts. Take, takes longer to uh, do. But on the other hand, if you're going off on a it's long perfect. trip, it's less, you know, you don't have to stop and mend it. If it gets yeah, it's also uh, it's also more tight than both uh, than especially it's knitting and crocheting is was invented very late. We don't have early crocheting, so it was it was a lot tighter. So it was a, a lot better for things that needed to be windproof, waterproof. Uh, because knitting, you have to be able to put through two needles through each stitch. On embroidery, you only on on, um, on the nail binding, you only need to put on one needle through each stitch, and and the needle could be a lot smaller than the yarn itself, too. So yeah, I enjoy that. Okay, so, well, I'm uh, going to to stop the recording oh, for now. And over. That's my Russian fairy tales book. That's the, that's just the that's just I have two of those. One is for the fairy tales that are oral tradition and one is literature fairy tales. And again, it has the it has the some illustrations. Let's see. Some of the same illustrations, some different.